Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have a similar problem as we did in the previous video. We still have a linear problem, but now we've placed M3 in the middle in between M1 and M2. We're still trying to find the force of gravity on M3 to the presence of the other two masses. Notice that we have the force of gravity between 1 and 3 to the left and the force of gravity between 3 and 2 to the right. So when we add them together, we'll have to add them vectorially, and direction does play a role here. But first, we're going to find the magnitudes of the two forces. So the magnitude of the force between 1 and 3 can be written as follows. G M1 M3 divided by the distance between them, which is R1 quantity squared. So R1 squared. When plug in the numbers, we get 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, and we'll leave out the units to make it a little bit cleaner. Here we have m1, which is going to be 2 times 10 to the 20th, and m3, which is 1 times 10 to the minus, uh, not minus, but plus 19th, and divide the whole thing by r1 squared, 1.5 times 10 to the 10th squared. So that is going to be equal to 6.67 e to the 11 minus, 2 times 10 to the 20th, 1 times 10 to the 19th, and divide the whole thing by 1.5 e to the 10th squared equals, and that will be 5.93 times 10 to the 8. Let me see here. Yes, that will be 5.93 times 10 to the 8 and that would be in Newton. So this is the force between 1 and 3, and it's going to be acting to the left. Now let's find the force between 2 and 3. So the force between 2 and 3 is equal to G M2 M3 divided by, in this case, it'll be R2 squared. So we get 10 to the minus 11, of course that would be newtons, meters squared per kilogram squared, but we're going to leave the units off. M2 is 1 times 10 to the 20th, that is 1 times 10 to the 19th, and the whole thing divided by, in this case will be 1 times 10 to the 10th quantity squared. And so, let's see here, wow, we got ones everywhere, that would be, yes. 6.67, 6.67 times 10 to the 8 newtons. So notice that magnitude-wise, we have a 6.67 times 1,000, that would be right. There you go. So now we have the magnitude of the two forces. Now we simply have to add them together vectorially. So let's do it carefully. So F total as a vector is equal to the vector sum of the other two vectors. That will be F13 plus F23. Now when we plug in what those vectors are equal to, we have to make sure we put in the signs correctly. So for F13, that's acting to the left, so that would be a minus 5.93 times 10 to the 8 newtons in the x direction, and then plus, because F 2, 3 is pointing to the right, so that would be plus 6.67 times 10 to the 8 newtons. And then we'll add them together, so we end up with 6.67 and then minus 5.93, so we end up with 0 0.74 and a positive in the x direction. Oop, well, I need to add the exponents here, times 10 to the 8 newtons in the x direction. And then if we want to rewrite it, we can write as 7.4 times 10 to the 7 newtons in the x direction. So here would be the vector sum of those two, or the ultimate result, the total force acting on M3 due to the presence of M1 and M2. And that's how it's done.